One of the questions when I was using Mara is always bugging me. How do you do muscle to You know, uh, okay, so sorry. Uh, so I, I didn't get the introduction, the introduction here is you know, the motivation here is. So your sample is clamped with uh, some kind of clamp, uh, which is mechanical clamp or electrostatic clamp, whatever it is. And your backside is cool because it has to cool, you know, because this plasma will be localized heating. So if you have to cool uniformly, the better it is cool, uh, cool the more selectivity you have, more uniformity you have. Uh, it overall improves everything, every aspect of the etching. Uh, so, so that it is cooled by helium because helium has a good thermal conductivity in non switching over. Now, what happens if you clamp the material but it starts leaking the, the helium from the backside? That means uh, you're not cooling it properly, uh, which will give you the, the worst result of this uh, in case of uh, fine structures, of course. So, sorry for my uh, dirty diagram, but I deliberately made it like this because uh, I I like it in that, in that way. So what I'm going to tell you here is how do you measure the link rate in the reactivant? So you'll have a wafer, you have a chuck. Let's say you clamp the wafer with the mechanical clamp. So the clamp comes and holds the chuck. And you're flowing helium through your MFC. Uh, MFC is mass flow controller. Let's say you put the pressure to 10 torr. Okay, so the mass flow controller decide okay how much gas you have to flow to make it kind of. Now let's suppose you don't have any heat. That means that means the mass flow controller will have a same amount open for whatever uh, I mean for the initial reading. There is no leak, so the mass flow controller does not have to do any work after the initial uh, initial tank door pressure, right? So it does not have to do any work. Now, but let's say you have a leak. You have a very small leak. So, but because of the leak, that 10 torr pressure, which was initially maintained by MFC, will now decrease. Now, MFC will have a PID group. So it will say, okay, now the pressure has decreased. I have to flow some more gas through the line, which is this line, to maintain the 10 torr pressure. So it opens again. And in the process, it calculates. Uh, it can easily calculate what is the flow rate of the helium, let's say 4 SECM, 5 SECM, 10 SECM, to maintain that 10 torr pressure. Okay, so this is the idea. That's how MFC measures the leak rate. Okay, so now the, uh, let's come to the clamping part. So the clamping is done in two ways. One is uh, Mechanical clamping, another one is electrostatic clamping. In electrostatic clamping, again, you have the two types, unipolar and bipolar. So the mechanical clamping is very simple. You know, it pulls the wafer from uh, very edges for four inch, six inch, and it normally destroys uh, the mm of the space uh, from the edge. Uh, so uh, in where, for example, silicon, you don't care that much space because it's cheap. Uh, so it does not hurt much. But for example, take the uh, quartz wafer or silicon carbide wafer, which are super expensive. Now, what they're going to do is you can't have, I mean, you can't afford to lose the 3 mm space. So that's where the electrostatic chuck comes into the picture. So how does it work? So this is a basically a simple diagram. So these, uh, this is your wafer, this is your you know, feed through. So the positive and negative electrodes are both there. And uh, so you apply positive on one side, negative uh, voltage on one side. In that way, what will happen is uh, it will induce the negative charge here, uh, possibly positive here, and positive charge here with respect to the negative high voltage. And because of the electrostatic interaction, uh, attraction, uh, this, because of the cooling forces, it will hold the wafer. That is the idea. Now you'll have a, uh, let's say you have a conducting wafer, it is easier because you know most of the you know, negative positive charge or negative charge will go at one side, and then the positive charge will happen on the other side, which is very easier for the conductor. But what happens uh, with the dielectric? Dielectric will simply induce the negative charge here and positive charge here. But it will also induce the positive charge on the other side and negative charge on the other side, shown by this color. And what happens is there is an interaction between this guy, which, uh, which is going to kill the overall Coulomb interaction between this guy. So, the problem here comes is uh, at some point of time, 
uh, if there's so much polarization, this interaction, this polymer interaction will be stronger than this one and it will lose the grip and your clamp, uh, your wafer will fly. So to get rid of this, what they do is they normally switch this polarization of the sun to get rid of this. But uh, switch this polarization of the sun so to get rid of this. So according to my uh, uh, idea, this is a very clever technique, but it has not involved that much because the reason of this high vacuum field throughs high voltage, so because you have to worry about the dielectric breaking down, there are so many things to consider here. So it's very difficult technique, very sophisticated technique, very few people have. Uh, um, it is, I think, very well developed with silicon, but with other metals, still a challenge. The mechanical clamps are the best in that case, but uh, ESC, they are improving and they're improving day by day. The problem is still with say, uh, the insulating wafers. I think uh, it will be sorted out very soon. Thank you.